Okay guys, this next part that you found this video link through mongty.com, M-O-N-G-T-H-Y, or I probably shared you the link because I'm about to explain to you these fun paperwork of SBA financing. SBA financing is if you are doing a business loan, um, it's or if you're doing a equipment, uh, things that working capital that you need to be part of your business to run successfully or you're doing a real estate loan that you're gonna own or occupy, use that strip center 51% of it. So you're financing, buying a strip center, and let's say there's 1,000 square feet, and you're gonna occupy 501 square feet, that's 51%, then you qualify for SBA to finance that strip center and your business in there as well. So this part is just for the SBA loan financing and its form. How do we know that it's SBA form that I sent you a link or you can get these copies of these forms under the website multi.com as well. I shared everything on there um, and I will share the link on the bottom of the description as well so you guys know where to get these forms just in case. Okay. And this is SBA 4506 and you know it's SBA because it says so right here. Um, I'm going to go through another one called the 912 and I'm going to send it to you. I had it orange, that's my note, what to talk to you about. And how do you know it's 912? It's on the bottom. You see there's on the bottom right there. Um, we also are gonna talk about form 1919 SBA form. And it looks like this. And how do you know it's 1919? You look for it on the bottom. And it says so on the bottom, 1919, okay? So, and there's another one. It's personal financial statement, but they they have it under the SBA form. It's called Form 413. So it looks like this. On the bottom it says 413. Okay? So I'm going to go briefly because it's really exciting to go through these forms, right? If you guys don't know me, I'm very sarcastic, yes. But I do paperwork all day long, so I'm getting to talk to people. I'm happy about it. What does 4506 mean? It's a tax transcript. So all the taxes returned that you sent me, those three years and all, and the personal and the business, this gives us time to communicate, audit, QC, um, obtain transcript from the IRS. So before you go to closing, all your tax return is going to be looked at and see if that's what you file with the IRS. And it's called the transcript. And you give us permission to go to the IRS. We send this to the IRS. says, hey, whatever they filed that they gave us this form, I want to see if that's what they filed. You have to complete in the number one through five. So up a number one, it is your name as it's shown on the ID of your transcript. So it's usually first name, last name. If you have a middle name, if you wrote out, let's say middle name is um, Jackson, then write out the whole word Jackson. Then on the 4506, you need to complete the word, the whole thing Jackson. If you only put J as initial, then it's just the letter J. Next part is if you have a joint return, exact same name as you filed in the tax return to put it on there. Each year that you file a tax return, what if it's not the same thing? One day I put Jackson, the next year I put J. I just got married and before it was a different name. Then for each of the year, you have to do one individually form for each year if it changed every single time. Okay? Um, the current address that you have on there and the previous address as well. And it has to match exactly like you filed to the IRS. That's about it. So after you complete all that on the bottom, um, you can leave the rest in the middle blank, which is six leave blank, seven, eight, leave blank, nine, leave blank. I will complete. You just do your part which says sign here and your title and your spouse, if any. That's for the 4506. Next part, the 912. If you notice, there's a lot of redundant, a lot of information that's being asked over and over and over. And there is a fillable form. So if you find the information onto the form on multi.com, then you can see there's some fillable that you can print it after you complete it, print it, um, sign it, scan it, send it to me. Okay. There's no e-doc. There's none of those signature, easy digital signature. The government has not been caught up with that yet. They still want the wet signature. Keep it original. You might need that later on. So don't discard that just so yet. 
So under the statement of personal history, that's what it's called. And in that it's called a 912 in our form in our world. So you guys, I talked to you and I said, hey, do you guys have the personal um, history form? But when I talked to my bank and committee and all the SBA department, they asked me, hey, Bobby, do you have the 912 form? There you go, same thing. So here it tells me about everything about you. They could do a background check who you are and if how long you've been here in the United States because the way I can best explain it is um, SBA is a privilege. It's a benefit that we can finance with the lower loan, uh, lower down payment or injection compared to a conventional loan. So they want to know who they're financing to because they're guaranteeing this to the bank, making sure you're like legit here right so then they ask for your name is the first part legal name matches your ID make sure it matches exactly your ID I my background is Vietnamese so I get it our name is not always easy um, what's your alias name and your legal name to simplify whatever your name is on your social security card should go on here because that's what they will search it under if you change your name let me know that you change your name we do need to uh, track that and find out because if not it's going to be discrepancy they're going to find like oh my gosh it's not the same person is this fraud so i'd rather disclose and let them know in advance so they ask for the first name middle name and last next part is where are you from your date of birth social security number um, place of birth kind of weird i know if you're a citizen or if you're not a citizen and you must initial that don't forget there's a little initial box that people always forget please initial that part all right next part is that um, number six it is your present current address where you've been residing at with telephone number and business telephone number to the right of the present resident address they want to track where have you been for the past 10 years so if you've only been at this location, at this home for two years, you have to keep on going up to eight years. If you only give me nine years, I need one more because when they do back history, they will find it. If in case you don't remember, do the best that we can because um, at least we have to go back as much as we can because they it just slow things the process down. All right. The next part, number seven, eight, nine, ten, it's yes or no. It asks if you uh, have been indicted, if you're a criminal, if you've been arrested, um, all of that, yes or no, um, an initial. DWI is included. If you, um, domestic violence is included. Um, animal cruelty, yes, you have to put yes or no. If you've been arrested, indicted, charged, whether you found guilty or not guilty, it does not matter. It didn't ask what was your finding. It asked, have you been charged, indicted, arrested? Those are the questions. Initial there to understand that you understand the question. And there's a signature on top of number 11. 11 is for internal use that they will search that for sure. Mm, I don't know if I should answer. If I do have it, what happened? Call me. We'll talk about what should chat. Um, bank fraud and all that stuff. Those are the number one thing that they're looking for. All we have to do is explain it and be proactive by... Um, getting the finance way in advance because it might delay up from six to eight weeks in case that there is a criminal charge of all those information then there is a fingerprint you send it to SBA you send it to FBI and they release and saying that oh it was a charge of this this and that it, it's a process a small fee for it I think it's under $112 um, but it's, it just takes a little longer six to eight weeks once you pass that we're good to go so if you have that problem before you do all the loan, get that done first, and then we'll start the loan process before you find your property, before you open your business. Um, have it been done? Yes, for sure. Many, many times they have been uh, been approved. We just have to explain what happened and making sure it doesn't happen again. Why do they ask for it? Again, it is for it's a benefit that we have this SBA backing us up as guarantee, because in the event of something happening um, to the business and the loan goes into default. You leasing the property, it's not like they can go and take away the space that you don't own. And, oh, okay, the equipment, you can have my equipment, spa chairs and kitchen. Banks are in the business of loaning money and investing with you. They're not in the business of rehabbing and reselling spa chairs or kitchen equipment. That's not their business. So they want to see the character there. I can find it reasonable, don't you? Next part is the Form 1919. 
there's a total of about seven pages. I'm talking about the first five pages that you have to fill out. The rest of the pages is how to fill out in writing, which I know most of us don't like to read it. So I'm going to explain it to you in this video. It looks like this. How do you know it's Form 1919? It's on the bottom. It is, again, redundant. It asks about your legal name, business name. So this is business. You put in your business name. What's the DBA if you have a Zoom name next to it? Where your address is going to be, your tax ID, um, the business phone number, and where the, um, the project address if it's not only the business. Sometimes your place of business is one thing, but all your mailing, accounting, and 1099 tax returns is filed somewhere else. That's the second box. That's what they're asking for. Who do you want them to contact and email? I'm pretty sure. Do you want it to contact your manager, yourself, and put that in? About the loan request and the purpose of the loan and the number of employees, leave that blank for now until we come back, we finalize it. So you have to repeat doing this paperwork every time some numbers changes. So just leave that blank for now. Next box, it says small business applicant ownership. What is your percentage share? If it's 100%, write it in. If you have other people who's investing with you, that's more than 20%. We need all their financials as well, collect all their information as well so that we are part of the loan because they're investing with you. Next part of all the questionnaire, I usually put a little, when you download this form from our website, multi.com, um, there's some highlighted area for there so it's easier for you to skim through so you know what it's supposed to be yes or no. But it's um, in brief, it's asking about, have you ever applied for an SBA loan before? Have you done a certified development company, CDC? Have you worked with them before? Um, if any, have you been suspended? Have you declared in an eligibility? Um, what else the question they ask? Do you have any affiliates? Do you have a file ever bankruptcy? Do you have a bankruptcy protection? Do you have a pending legal action? Do you have any suit against you? Anybody suing you? Um, what else? Exploiting or any of some of your product that you're doing will be exporting um, some goods. Anything with aquaculture. Can't pronounce that, but you get what I'm trying to say. Um, is it from gaming? SB does not finance anything gaming or alcohol or SOB, just so you guys know that, okay? If you do doing that, stop now. There's a different loan, just not SBA, program will qualify for those type of tobacco, um, like marijuana, those the dispensary, um, SOB business, which is strip bars or um, stuff like that, because some state it is legal, I get it, and um, or alcohol bars and stuff, then it cannot, it has to go under a different category and a different loan program. That's page two. I'm going to page three. There's a big old light. I'm so sorry. Here you go. Here is the page three. It looks like that. And it asks for your staff and employee. Are you related to anybody with the SBA? It's a true or false question. So you have to mark that part in for you. And at the bottom of page three, just sign, authorize, print your name and your title of the company. Page four, principal name, social security number or your TIN number, date of birth, place of birth, city and foreign country your home address and your home telephone number, percentage of ownership that's on the top part. Next part is very um, self-explained. It asks if you're a veteran, you put in the number, if yes or no, uh, gender, M for male, F for female, X for not disclosed, race, you put in the number that matches what our race and ethnicity. Next part, number 17, 18, 19, is yes or no question. Um, redundant from the other form. Have you been arrested in the past six months? Um, have you been arraignment? Have been indicted, criminal, um, convicted, plead guilty, any part? If any of that says yes, continue on with the form. Call me. We will discuss. We have to write up an explanation for it and get a different process, which is a fingerprint send it to FBI and they will send it back what happened in the description and you write out a long story and I'll pull up my violin to play music for you if you need. 2021-22 um, ask if, if you are a small business applicant more than if you've been delinquent in the be past before if you're a citizen so it's a lot of yes or no question. Um, 23 to 26 um, also ask if you uh, business have been controlled involved with legal action including a divorce. So what happens? So if you've been in a divorce and you have another company corporation in the state of Texas, it is a common law. So if you had share, let's say you have 50% share, then technically your 50% share is 25% share to your spouse. And if there's a divorce and you didn't pay up, didn't sell, there is some kind of a legal 
logistic that we have to deal with. So it's a yes or no question. It's not end of the road. It's just really a simplified um, question. And if so, there it is. Then we just need to get an updated document to support it. Page five, sign and title with the date. Easy peasy. That is form SBA 1919. Next one, the I think we're on three. This is the form 413. This is personal financial statement. This is under SBA. There's other personal financial statement that's not on the SBA form. A lot of uh, tenant rep, landlord, you can Google it. They have it all over the place. Um, this, If you do it under the SBA form, it's a, un, it's a uniform that can communicate through every single bank. They all use this. Sometimes when you go through a bank, they all want it on their own form. If you use this form, everybody accepts it. Now, this is not as easy to explain to complete, but I'm going to do a brief one just to be in part of this package of the SBA. However, if you want more detail of what these numbers in detail of, look for another link that, um, that I will explain how to complete a personal financial statement for a 7A or 504 loan. All right. In brief, it tells you on two sides. All right. Um, left and right, two boxes. One part to the left, looking at the form, it is all the um, assets. Assets meaning um, your cash on hand, savings, IRA, life insurance, stocks, bonds, real estate, automobile, anything that you have and own, whether you have a loan or not, input it on there. The right side, it is liability, all the expenses. So the trick here is, I think it's easier to work from the other pages to the front, okay? So once you put in all the information on the left-hand side of the asset, other pages, um, page on the bottom, section one, two, three, four, ask the detail of it. Right at the detail, who um, owns that property, if you have it with a bank mortgage, stock bond, you know, Fidelis or whoever the company you have with, real estate owned with the mortgage company, who owns it, if it's free and clear, put free and clear, personal property, unpaid balances, and others. So input those information first so you can calculate it, then you go back to liability to the first page to do the right side. All the liabilities, all the expenses that you have of all the items that you own. I hope that makes sense. Here's a key word. The bottom, their net, it has to match numbers. So it has to be exactly the same. So the difference is the net worth. So in a different video, look for that, how you come up with that number. So on the right hand side, it has a net worth, which is the difference of the two, because the bottom total asset has to be equal to your net worth plus your, general li uh, plus your total liability. I hope that information helped out. Just complete that in brief, really simple, don't overthink it. It's okay. Most of your banker or lender will look at this and say, if they have a question, they will ask to help you revise or to correct it. I hope that information helped out. The next link that I will send in and make a video for everyone is other forms that does not relate to SBA, but for conventional, but everybody need to have as well. So I hope this information is useful. I will do another video in Vietnamese. Nếu mà chúng ta không có hiểu cái video này trong tiếng Anh thì mọi thứ sẽ là một cái video khác nữa. Uh, it's not going to be part of this one trong tiếng Việt nếu mà chúng ta cần hiểu biết là mấy cái đơn của SBA. So I hope this video was helpful. Comment below. My email and website is in the description. It is mokthi.com. And my email is dreamteam at mokti.com. Dreamteam, D-R-E-A-M, team, T-E-A-M, at mokti.com. Hope that was helpful. Ta-ta for now.